Hey, you're so good, mother <laughs> So I was like, I made him angry. <laughs> yes, massive, massive crash ball. Oh. <laughs> Is that the truth or not? <laughs> no. <laughs> you know everyone watching just heard that, and now they're going to smite you. <laughs> I've come to Andorra to meet the man who has won four of the last five world championships. The last three of those back to back. And he's done it again! He has the ability to rise for the big occasion like no other rider in the modern era. Ah, oh, he takes the win! But in 2019, he proved he was much more than a one race specialist, winning the World Cup overall for the first time and making him the first rider in over a decade to hold both titles in the same year. Unbelievable from Louis Bruni. Let's see why Louis Bruni is the undisputed king of downhill. Squashes the finish line jab, what's the time? Lolo. Yo, Rob. How are you, man? I'm good, mate. Good to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. Welcome in Andorra. Bit chilly? So cold. Get in the warm, mate. Let's get in the warm. <laughs> so it's been a while, Luke, since we last had a sit down and a proper chat. Actually, it was 2016 the last time we did this. And you've had a huge amount of success since then. And quite honestly, I have to take a little bit of the credit for that. Because back then, when we went around the back of your house, I told you, you were going to win everything. You will dominate like Gwynna's the last few years. That's what everyone's saying. Told you. Yeah, you were right, man. Exactly. I'm going to take you through some of your better moments over the last few years. And we're going to start with your first World Cup win, 2016 in Kenz. You were world champion at the time. But I never won a World Cup. You'd never won a World Cup, no. Let's have a look, it happened. Three of the last four world championships. Green. It is green. Look how fast you're going, man. Look at you. Yeah, and uh, we pulled out this semi slick out of nowhere, and no one had one. No! It's far away, you know? And it was so good. How did this World Cup win compare to being world champion? I would choose world champ race over a World Cup round, but. I waited so long before the, my first World Cup win that yeah. this one felt so special. It felt so good to finally do it, you know? So you won your first World Cup in 2016, but the two following years, World Cup-wise, were quite difficult for you. Yeah, big time. I had quite a lot of little injuries. Yeah. You know, kind of things that takes you out for a while and just while the other ones are just racing and you just have to catch the train. And then it's so hard to get is it, is it hard for you to, to manage your head in those periods? Because you want to win, yeah. right? I mean, that's... Yeah, and when I got injured these two years, I was just so sad, so disappointed in myself, and so... Were you? Yeah. If you ask around me, I'm not someone extra confident. It's mad to hear you say that, you know, you're not confident, because you have come across to me as being perfectly confident. And by that, I mean there's no arrogance to you, you know, because some riders, like, they're a bit bigger than real life, you know what I mean? They have to be to perform, but you are just you. And that, yeah, I, I never see a weakness in you mentally, but you do. Yeah, 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 for sure. I've had a mental coach for, like, since 15. Yeah. And then he saw all my, my uh, mistakes. How much of a difference has working with a mental coach made to you, then, in a race run? It's not only in a race run, it's all the time. Is it? At training, in my life, with my friends, with my girlfriend, with my it parents. It that deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of the thing that brought, opened my eyes on many things. I try to have everything settled all the time, as balanced as I can. So when I get to the race, I only think about riding fast. Is there one piece of advice that stands out that the sports psychologist gave you? Just one. One thing that really makes a difference. Being focused on myself. Stop caring about what other people think and care about what you want and what you need to do. Hmm. And that's turned everything around. Yeah. You know everyone watching just heard that, and now they're going to smoke you. I have some other cousins. <laughs> so 2019 started brilliantly. Marabor, 
you'd never, in my eyes, look better than this. Really? Yeah, look how you ride this bike here, dude. Bruni, looking absolutely immaculate. Look at the time Bruni goes fastest. But things can change very quickly. Fort William, second round, and this massive, massive crash. Was that your qualifying run? Yeah, that was qualifying. Whoa. Yeah, that's like a tenth of a second in attention. And you just lost the grip and clip. Whoa. Could have been catastrophic. Yeah. I didn't think I would ride the day after. But you did. That eighth place, saving all these points, made the difference at the end, you know? To be honest, this race here for you queued up probably the best mountain bike World Cup season has ever been. Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you manage, you know, that, that risk and that injury? Because you need to be going as fast as you can go all the time, really. You have to always ride, at, at least I do, always ride in my comfort zone. Even in a race run? Yeah, even in a race run where I push, but I never go over the limit. I'm sure some tracks I can go faster, but I might, I'm not sure I can finish the run. You say that right in 2019, I saw that as well, because you kept your head. And yeah, it would have been yeah. so easy with Piron, your big rival last year, and he was just, I don't know, he rides maybe on a little bit more emotion or something, like he can just sometimes yeah. turn it on, and it, it must have been hard for you to, to, to manage him. Yeah, because his reactions were really good. He would not do well and then win the one after. Yeah. When he was on this reaction feeling and riding, it was impossible to beat because he was riding with all he had. Yeah. While I was trying to ride smart. So I was, it was hard to balance. Uh, and 2019 was a weird one in the fact that the World Cup finished after the World Championships. You still had one round to go. Yeah, I was trying to do one thing at the time. We got to mont and everything was just focused on that race. The defending world champion, Luik Bruni, gets on track here in mont What is it about world championships that brings out the best in you? Oh, so fast through those holes there! I don't know, I feel like the one-shot run is what I like, now or never. Is it going to be Luik Bruni or is it going to be Brosnan? It's Bruni! Bruni becomes a three-time back-to-back world champion! Look at Amory's face. Oh, no! That was kind of the thing I didn't want from him because after a race like this, yeah. he will react to one of the best runs he can do, you know? In Snowshoe. So I was like, I made him angry. Well, let's go to Snowshoe a week later, the last World Cup of the year. You went in, number one plate, the leader. It had been an intense season. You'd won Worlds. You did have the biggest title, but you hadn't got this one. No. Amory leading, you needed to come down in the top three yeah. to win the overall World Cup, and you came down in third place. I know. And now his destiny belongs to Danny Hart, the last man at the top. Either Danny Hart wins the race, and I'm fourth. Amory is second, I win the overall. Either Danny is fifth or fourth after me, and I win the overall. But if he's second or third, and I get pushed to fourth while Amory is winning, I lose it. Danny Hart goes in a second out of that split, which means the World Cup does go to Amory Piron. That run felt like 20 minutes. Did it? Yeah. Last split for Danny Hart, and it's green. So now the World Cup overall will go to Louis Bruni. Here comes Danny Hart. Danny is not supposed to be good at sprinting, <laughs> but he holds on and then he wins. Look at the time. He shatters Amory Piron's dreams, and it's Louis Bruni that is the overall World Cup champion. Tears, man. I, I can't imagine you wouldn't have cried after that. It was so much there, mate. And then all the season just finished there, you know? It was and done. on a high. I love Danny Hart since then. Yeah! <laughs> and your relationship with Amory, it's been one of the best things to watch this last year, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I loved watching you and him together. It's, it's like, as you've got bigger rivals, you've become bigger friends. Yeah. Which is so unlikely. As he progressed, I've always tried to help him. Like, yeah, because he's super nice. And then he started to be really good. And then... So you stopped helping him as much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then it started to be, to be a really good relationship because now we were on the same level, you know? The bond was getting stronger. It was the most spectacular season I've ever seen. Two Frenchmen battling, winning everything, nothing between you. And then that last race, that last run of the last race, yeah. deciding a World Cup. Exactly. So you had a lot of success last year, and I think a, probably a big part of that as well is that you're, you know, you're really settled in your personal life with Milena. Yeah, she's been kind of the little thing that brings me back each time in the zone, you know, because she knows me perfectly. 
I think I owe her a lot. You make a good team, that's for sure. I'm gonna go and see her down in Girona and then I'm coming back here to Andorra and I might, I might have something up my sleeve for you. Very special. All right, I'm ready, man. I've oversold it. now to see Melina, Lewitt's girlfriend. He himself says that he wouldn't be so successful without her in his life. Melina, how are you? Good, thank nice you. To see, nice to see the sun, nice down here, isn't it? You want to go upstairs? Yes, please. Let's have a chat. How are you keeping? Good, good, good. So, Elena, you're Luik's girlfriend and one of the top cross-country riders on the planet. He says that you are also one of the biggest influences in him and part of his success. Do you think that those two things go hand in hand? For sure. We always support each other a lot. And since we met, like, both of us just took a step up. I think when he met me, he saw, like, or more of, like, an endurance athlete. I, I think he learned something from me, like seeing, okay, Melania sleeps from 10 to 8 every day. Yeah. Like, that's just some routines yeah. that, that you need, like nutrition and yeah. recovery. And, and discipline. We try to train together. But Louis can't keep up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the truth or not? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I can get my ego really happy on the climb, and he gets yeah. ego really happy yeah. on the downhill. Yeah, perfect team then. Yeah. yeah. How do you balance your relationship and racing? At the races, we are both like agreeing that we are on duty, like we're doing our jobs. So when it's World Cup week, it, it's more about the racing than the relationship. Yeah. And on Monday, we come back home and we are just Louis and Melina again. Yeah. The fact that we're both like elite athletes make it easier sometimes yeah. because we understand. Like, yeah. I understand the pressure. Louis is under when he's racing and racing for the world champ title or the World Cup overall. Like, yeah. it give him space because I know that I am his girlfriend and he loves me so much, but I also know how much racing means. Yeah. Is there one thing, one thing that makes Louis the racer he is? That's such a hard question. I know it is. <laughs> it's actually almost impossible to answer, but what do you think it is? I think his ability to really put the focus in when it counts. There's the past and there's the future, but there's also like now. And I think Louis is really good at being in now. No, you're right. No, but to win four of the last five world championships, you know, one run that comes around once a year, can't contemplate how he's done it that many times. Can you? I mean, it's, no. it's almost unbelievable, I think. Yeah, it's super I, really I gonna win. I don't know what to say. It's no. just insane. <laughs> That's right, there isn't much you can say about it. Milena, Louis is incredible at riding a bike fast. Can he ride one slowly, like walking speed? Because I've got something I'm working on to surprise him. Well, normally he doesn't like it, no? <laughs> no, I don't think he will, actually. <laughs> but I'm going to try and pull it off anyway. And I'm going to go and see him again in Andorra. So fingers crossed. Milena, good luck next season. Thanks for your time. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it's been amazing to talk to you. <laughs> you too. So living in Andorra is only the world's greatest ever motorcycle trials rider. And I know someone who knows him, and to get him out on a bike with me and Luik would be a dream come true, literally. So I'm going to make a phone call and see if I can make this happen. Jose, have you had any luck? All right, I'll leave it with you. You've got hold of him. Yeah. He said what? Hello, Luik. You mentioned to me you got a trials bike quite recently. So as a special treat for you, us, me, I've arranged for the king of downhill to go riding with the king of motorcycle trials, oh, yeah. Tony Bow, 26 oh, yeah. times a world hey. champ. Luik, get all your riding done before Tony starts his bike ride. Okay, where is the <laughs> Come on, dude. Yes! Look, that's good control. Pretty good. <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, actually. Oh!
seen you so far out of your comfort zone. <laughs> hey, you look so good, mother <laughs> Christ, Dad. I think it's the altitude, not my fitness. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty close. I think we only do that once. That was close. Oh my God, Tony! What is <laughs> Yay! How do you do that? Can you levitate in real life? Tony, it was as amazing as I thought it would be to watch you ride. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think of it, Louis? Good thing. Thank you, man. I'm depressed. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was bad, but now I'm like, I'm going to sell the bike, I think. <laughs> it's been great to see you for a few days, mate. Mm -hmm. It's going to choke me to say it, but you are an incredible world champion. You're an incredible ambassador for the sport. You are, dude. You are. You're the man. You are the man. Thank you, On man. and off the bike, and it's good to see you winning, and... I don't know, you got another year in you like last year? It was a pretty stressful season. Yeah, that was way too stressful. It took me a while to get ready for this one. But now I've seen you and stuff, it gets me pumped and I'm, I'm ready, I think. Good luck, mate. Bon chance. Merci, my man. Merci. Come back in one piece, that's all. Yeah, we won't race, race. We just, yeah. No, ride around, that's a good stay idea. Together, stay tight. Faster than me? Yeah. Obviously, we did a little race and you were like. <laughs> anyway, look, it's been great. I think it's time we loaded up. Yeah. Yep. 